could she be mine? Edith, this is my sister. I don't think she's the right choice. You have to trust me. Thomas, your bride is frozen. I run your hot bath. Thomas, I think, is a character who's trying to be something he isn't. He's trying to project a personality that he doesn't necessarily have. Yes. And early on, we see him when he's dancing with Edith. He's kind of a Jane Austen hero. And later, when he's professing his love to her, that's directly paraphrased from Jane Eyre when Rochester is confessing mm. his love to Jane. Mm. And I was wondering if you were playing him as a character who was building a, a facade through the kind of wealth of inspiration he had at, at his disposal at that time. Wow, that's an amazing question. Uh, I, you know, I think there's a part of his charisma which is performed and, and presented, and a part of his charisma which is very genuine. Um, so for example, I think his enthusiasm about engineering, his enthusiasm about the future is very real. I think his, he actually has an a, a innate gift. Um, and, um, and perhaps he's used to people buying what he's selling more easily than they do at the beginning of this film. Um, but in terms of being inspired by, that's a sort of whole meta conversation about being inspired by the wealth of it. Um, I tried to just, I tried to, to build a character who had lots of layers, you know, that he was someone who actually had a lot of private pain and was, and like many people do, trying to just put, the, put, a, put a good face on it. He's so guilty about so much. And so you get, you get what, you, what you see is charm, behind that is uh, guilt, and behind that is vulnerability. What's interesting here is that even though it is a gruesome and horrifying film, there's this thread of sensuality throughout of it. I think it's yeah. a very sexy horror film. For your character in particular, I think sexuality is very important because it actually changes him, not to give anything away, exactly but so. transforms him a yeah, bit. Yeah, I think that's really true, and I really wanted to, I'm really happy you said that because I think it, uh, it's, such, it's such a huge part of gothic romance. Um, the idea that, um, that your sexuality kind of drive, impels you into situations which may be dangerous. You know, that's, it always happens to the heroine. Um, she's drawn um, by the magnetism of a tall, dark stranger, and then often that suddenly, she, she's suddenly in, in an insecure place. And I think the inversion is actually that uh, through Edith, Mia Bashakovska's character, Thomas, experiences a healthy sexuality for the very first time, and it changes who he becomes. I also would love to know, you have such a strong background in classics, you've mm. studied classics, mm. you've done Chekhov, you've done Shakespeare. Yeah. I'm wondering how all of those experiences come into play for something like this, and just in your work in general, probably. You know, it's interesting, this felt like, this felt like new territory for me, um, because there's a way, uh, you know, the authors you mentioned, um, or certainly in Greco-Roman drama, there's a very, there's very specific archetypes there. Um, although a lot of that is about fate and free will. Uh, and in this, in this film, this is very much about the, the sort of battle between uh, fate or, or pre, something that's predetermined and, and expressing your free will, taking control of your life. Um, and like Shakespeare and Chekhov, they, they, they write dynasties they obviously deal with them very differently, but you know, some a play like King Lear, um, Cymbeline, uh, Hamlet. Those are those are those are plays. Of, those are dynastic dramas. Cherry Orchard is also about a family. Uncle Vanya is about a family, um, and Gothic romance has its own place. It has its own uh, it has its own particular flavor and tone. And so this actually felt quite new for me, which I found thrilling. What do you want? You have nowhere else to go. This is your home now. 